Good evening and welcome to the Thursday, February 28th regular meeting of the school committee. I would ask that uh, those who are here and would like to join us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Otherwise, we are um, have an opportunity for public comment. Anybody? Okay. And we will go right into the um, superintendent's report. Okay. Uh, before I actually do that, I want to just have a very quick recognition to Building and Grounds and the DPW because uh, this morning they took a call at 4:30 and had our buildings open and super clean and clear by the time we we all got to school. So great job. Um, so my superintendent's report for tonight has a little bit of a smattering and then it will give you an update on where we are on building the district strategy. Uh, this week we had our tier focused monitoring review. Uh, that is formally known as the coordinated program review, so some people know it under that name. Uh, what does that mean? It means that there are there can be any number of reviewers. Three were sent to Hopkinton this week, and what they're looking at are particular aspects of special education, L instruction, and civil rights. So they came into the district, and in two to four weeks, we should receive our report from them. Uh, once we get our report, they will tell us the things that we're doing very well and the things that um, we are proficient on and then any areas that we need to improve upon. So after that, we have 20 days to respond and uh, our next visit will be in three years and that will focus primarily on special education services. So what will happen when we respond is we'll submit to them a continuous improvement plan. We have up to one year to re improve on recommendations and that doesn't mean that you fully improve upon or um, resolve the issue that you have, but as long as they're seeing ongoing improvement, we're in good shape. So what kinds of data do they use to analyze what we're doing in Hopkinton? They sent out to, I believe, special education parents 392 surveys and they got 32 responses. They had interviews with three of our building principals, central office administrators, teachers, and parents. They conduct walkthroughs of our buildings, classrooms, and they look at our programs. And they take some of the state and student data profiles that um, are available to them through the department. At the end of the day on Tuesday, I think, we sat with them and just got you know some kind of early accolades. They, they were actually quite lovely. Uh, the START program at the high school and middle school uh, both got accolades. Lombardi, the therapy dog at the high school, high marks for Lombardi. Uh, the best program at Hopkins and the Crow and, Crow, Co and Try teaching models also at Hopkins. And they also gave us high marks on our exceptional data results. So they looked at things like disproportionality, restraints, that sort of thing. Can I ask you what disproportionality you surely can. To yeah, what they're looking for is to see if we have um, sort of an overabundance of minority students enrolled in special education classes. Thank you. And we do not. Um, and if I may also ask you a couple, a couple of questions right mm -hmm. here on the bullet. Um, so 392 students or families, is, is that right? 392 surveys went out, yes. So they okay. would have gone out to parents. I see. Yeah. And is that specifically special needs or? Um, I think that they go out to special education parents. I so see. that list would have been provided for them through the Director of Student Services Office. I see. It also talks about EL instruction, right? So did the 392 include the EL families? I don't believe that it included the EL families, no. Okay. Uh, because if that were true, we would have had um, like an additional 220 surveys that would have gone out with that. I see. Um, mm -hmm. and, I, and I'm just wondering, you know, it's less than 10% responses. Which they say is fantastic. Is that right? Yes. Okay, so just yeah. wanted to hear that. Okay. Wow. I know. I and, see. you know, obviously they're doing this in districts all over the state. Okay. 
Um, so then the results that came back, they may or may not be representative of the entire EL population, you think? Of the, the entire special education population, yes. It does, but not necessarily EL. Correct. Okay. Yeah. All right. Here's another little thing that happened in the district this week. We had um, some wind caused some fairly significant roof damage at the middle school, uh, but rest assured we've already called the insurance company and a roofer has been on the scene and it's on its way to repair, but it did mean that some kids had to be removed from some classrooms at the middle school this week. Uh, we are underway in our participation with the FUSE program. I'm not sure how much you know about FUSE, but FUSE is uh, something that we are sort of the beneficiaries of because we belong to the Education Collaborative. We belong to Tech. And last year they had their first cohort year. This is their second cohort year. And we are hopefully sending two high school and two middle school teachers to become FUSE fellows. So what it means to become a FUSE fellow, there are a couple of sort of boot camp days in the summer. There are 10 after school days, and I think they spend about two and a half hours after school. But the kind of training that they get um, allows them to become professional development presenters in other districts. And what happens is FUSE fellows will come into our district and do professional development. What's really nice about it is our teachers are growing in terms of their repertoires, but it also promotes the use of blended and personalized learning. I'm very excited to see this, Dr. Kavanaugh. And I'm, I'm glad that you know you made the time to push it and you're getting <laughs> people to go. Yeah, it should be good. And you know this is a huge benefit to being part of tech. It is, and I think the, t the teachers and administrators who were part of cohort one have nothing to say except for wonderful things about views. so. We're excited about it. So have you identified people or not yet? I believe both Mr. Keller and Mr. Uh, Bishop have people who are 95% certain that they're in. Okay, you know, I think great. that at this point we're just hoping that teachers are able to make accommodations in their schedules so that they can attend the summer days and the after school hours. Great. Thank you. Good. All right, and so now for the update on our district strategy. Where are we at this point? Uh, the survey is complete. It did go to the public library. We got handwritten ones from the senior center. Uh, lots of, I think about 130 parents responded, 50 teachers responded. Uh, no, I'm sorry, I think 80, 80 teachers, it's, it's 80 teachers who responded, and 50 people who are employees of the town just generally also responded. So I thought those were pretty good numbers. Uh, we sat over February vacation, so on the 21st of February, Mr. Bishop, oh, no, he wasn't there. He was ill that day. I'm sorry. Mr. Keller, Mrs. Carver, Nancy Cavanaugh, Jen Parson, and I sat with the um, consultant, Cindy Boney, who uh, has been working on this with us. And Cindy had done most of the legwork in terms of taking that data and kind of culling it a little bit. And you know that it's largely qualitative data, so I can show you on the next slide sort of the way we are looking at it um, to kind of make some, a little bit of quantitative sense out of something that's largely qualitative. Our focus groups are kind of prepared and ready to go for March 9th, and the last piece is that the admin team is still working hard on this. We met on February 26th and spent the bulk of our meeting talking about, you know, sort of the direction that we see the district going, and I'll share a little bit of that in some of the later slides as well. Sorry, Dr. Kavanaugh, how many students responded? You mentioned, the, I, think I think you're doing like 1,274 right? might be the right nice. number. High school, right? High school, middle school combined. Okay. Yeah. And did you say 130 parents? Yes. So in the adult surveys, I think okay. altogether, we had about 300 people in the adult surveys. But that was made up of parents, town people, seniors, uh, folks who work for the town but may not necessarily live here. Uh, you know. Oops, we're not moving. Oh, I think I moved a lot. Hold there on. We go. Yep, there we go. All right. So I just put this in here as a screenshot because we really can't embed some links. So you'll get to see at least what some of the adult surveys look like. What Cindy did when she looked at the data was she said, 
she put things into categories. So what you see up there now is just a little snippet that said these are all things that people said about an individual. What would we want an individual to look like or what skills would we want them to possess? So the first one talks about things like respect and empathy. And so all of the words that seem to kind of fall into that category of um, things like community, appreciation, being polite, that all went in that very first category. What she did uh, was to say, okay, so because you have three choices in that grouping, if respect and empathy were your first choice, we took the number of people who said it and we applied five points to it. So 40 people would have said that, so we gave that five points. In the second category over, she took the number of people who said it and gave that four points. And then in the third category, it was just the number of people who said that as their third choice. And adding up all of those numbers, that kind of gave us a little bit of a quantitative feel for the things that adults in the community hope that individual students possess. And as you kind of go, this so all the survey data now, there's about 100 pages of it, are actually on the district website on the superintendent's page if you want to click in there and take a look at it. I know that you all have copies, but if anyone in town would like to see that, they certainly can. The middle school and high school survey information is there as well, and that's kind of interesting because uh, that we just sort of categorized the answers alphabetically. So one of the thing, questions would be, what is something that you don't want Hopkins to, to stop doing? And if you look at the high school survey, it will say AP, 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 AP. So it's really very interesting to look at the survey data. All right, in terms of the focus groups, that's going to be a little bit hard to read over on the right-hand side. Uh, if there are parents out there who are still interested in joining a focus group, they should call or email Georgette Wagar in the central office. Uh, right now, we have about 25 parents who are signed up for the day, and I, I actually think that that's, that's a pretty good amount for, you know, it's a busy time of year, and people are willing to give up four and a half hours on a Saturday, so I am grateful for that, but we'd be happy to have a few more parents if they would like to, to join, and even as late as today, we still had people sort of trickling in, so sometimes I think it's just a matter of not having responded to your email uh, immediately. Uh, the day will be from 9 to 1.30. It's going to be in the high school library. And if you sign on to this, you'll see that for each one of those categories that you see on the right-hand side, there's actually a description of what each of those uh, sort of community conversations will discuss, and there are some foundational readings there. And one of the things that I keep trying to point out is the, the foundational readings are there just to give people sort of a common language or some understanding of what we're really talking about. It certainly doesn't limit conversation. I think it's just designed to give us a foundation to the conversation. So in session one, for example, there are three different categories. And the first one talks about enrollment and growth. What are we going to do with our facilities and resources? The second one is entitled Wisdom Seekers Wanted. And that is that sort of question about how do we get kids to really know what they want to know and learn what they want to learn and be a little bit more self-directed about that. And the third category is entitled <coughs> Each and All. So if you are a person who signed on to this, you would really only be attending one conversation in each one of those hours sessions so at the end of the day you would have attended three different conversations during three different sessions not nine conversations so I know that there are people who say but I would like to attend them all but that's not exactly feasible so at one o'clock on that day we will be sticking around from 1 to 1 30 so that people can debrief and add any additional commentary that they they want to add about anything that was said or confusing or any of those sorts of things during the day and the last part is what has the admin team been doing? So when we met on Tuesday, we are really still very broad in our thinking, and I just sort of keep throwing things out there to sort of feed the thinking. And this slide that you see here is just a sample of one of the things that we had talked about. Uh, the World Economic Forum takes a look at what businesses would say are the top 10 skills they would have liked students to have in 2015. Those were their responses. And how have those things changed in 2020? So, for example, number six, emotional intelligence, did not make the list in 2015. And in 2020, it happens um, to be number six there. And, you know, you can kind of take a look at that. Uh, but I think that some of the things that are there, number three in 2020, creativity is on the list. 
creativity was 10 in 2015. So we just, a little bit of food for thought. Okay. Uh, what you see here is something that comes from the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. Uh, it's copied in the blue book verbatim by high school. Students should demonstrate, and we read through all of those bulleted things. Uh, the third bullet, for example, the ability to direct and evaluate their own learning, be aware of resources available to support their learning, and have the confidence to access these resources when needed. And, you know, it's a good opportunity for us to self-evaluate and say, are all of our kids able to do that? Are some of our kids able to do that? Do we teach those things explicitly? Do we not? And just give us something to sort of chew on again. And then the last thing that I'll show you, this isn't the last thing that we did, um, but this comes from Next Gen Learning Challenges. And one of the things that I personally like about it is it takes content knowledge and it makes it one of the four squares. Uh, habits of success, creative know-how, and wayfinding abilities are the other three. And so we had some conversation about, can you teach those? Can you measure those? And we even looked at some of the data that goes along with that. So these are not the roadblocks that we generated. These are roadblocks that sort of come to us from next gen. So lots of times, school will say it's really hard to use non-achievement data to inform our instructional decisions. And, and sometimes it is, right? It's sometimes very hard to measure uh, the degree to which a kid can persevere, for example, because we what we might interpret to be perseverance may really just be, well, this is something I find so interesting that it isn't even work for me, or, you know, I'm reading this because my parents told me that if I read this and I get an A this quarter, I can get A, right? So what's the, mo it might just be extrinsic motivation. So it's hard to know, really, I guess it's hard, what we're trying to say is it's hard to measure those things. Um, and teachers also have that tension between offering students choice, which we would very much like to do, when you also have to balance that with the fact that there are state standards. And um, the last one is, you know, sometimes it's hard to take our kids and put them into sort of performance tasks because kids are in very different places with their learning of the material. And I'm just going to leave you with these ideas. This is something that uh, I had come across, and I sort of found it pretty inspirational. Uh, Margaret Wheatley is the person who has done that sort of research that says, how do communities get bigger, faster, stronger, better? That kind of stuff. Um, so in one of her books, uh, Walk Out, Walk On, if you have access to this, and maybe I'll have Georgette upload it so you can, in the yellow box where there's that um, short video um, by Tuesday Ryan Hart, she talks about leadership instead of being sort of that heroic form of leadership where a leader comes in and tries to coerce or convince or uh, bring along all of the followers um, to do more of sort of a hosting model where you know you have sort of a very big group of people who bring everyone along. And what I really, really love is in from the other book, Turning to One Another, there is no power greater than a community discovering what it cares about. Ask what's possible, not what's wrong, and keep asking. Uh, so I just really love that text, and I hope that if there are people at home who believe in that, you will come out and see us on March 9th. Let's ask you just one question about the, um, the scope of the effort. Is, are you, is the administrative team looking at um, pretty strictly what happens within the classroom, or does it extend to beyond the classroom in terms of our strategy? We did talk about all kinds of things, okay. about what happens during the day, what happens after the day. Um, sort of, we've even talked about sort of the discrepancy between, you know, economic status kids, right? So there are some kids who can afford lots of things beyond the regular school day and some kids who can't afford lots of things beyond the regular school day. And how do we reconcile those things as well? So I thought we had some pretty rich discussions on Tuesday. Great. We have no answers, but lots of ideas. Dr. Kavanaugh, I really like these ideas in, in general. I'm, you know, I get excited with stuff like this. Uh, treasure curiosity more than certainty. That's, that's really good. And talking to people, uh, not just whom you know, but you don't know, and you never talk to, I think that requires uh, pushing yourself. It does. Um, those are great messages. 
Um, I'm, I'm just wondering about, uh, you know, I spoke with you a little bit about this, about the March 9th date. Um, I'm just wondering if there is an alternate available. I think the ideas that you have presented, all the buckets, the nine buckets, they are amazing. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that a lot of us run for school committee wanting to be involved in work of this nature. Um, and with March 9th being the date when, uh, you know, it's a, it's a big day for the destination imagination people. And uh, I know there's a conversation on project-based learning. Um, I'm just wondering if uh, there could be an alternate date provided. Also, it's the date of HEF Gala, so I don't know if HEF people who are all about innovation, if they're a little busy trying to do some last minute planning and what have you. So I'm just wondering if another date is a possibility. If, if there are parents who are interested in coming to another date, that would be fine. I would just want them to like get in touch with me or Georgette and we'll try to figure out how to make that happen. Okay. Yeah. Would it would it uh, would it be okay if I'm one of the parents? <laughs> Not always a parent. Okay. 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 Yes, okay. 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 Yeah. Thank you. Okay. I'm all set. Well, that's great. I will move into then the uh, school committee chair report. And as people know, we were at the uh, board of selectmen for them to approve the submission of the statement of interest uh, for the Elmwood School next year, which passed unanimously, uh, which will allow us to move forward with the submission. I think the date is in April when they're actually looking for the date, but we have to wait for the minutes from the board of selectmen meeting as well as the minutes from our meeting when we approve the SOI to go along with our submission. So that's moving along nicely, which is in good time because uh, just I heard from Georgette and that just since January 1st we have had 32 additional students enter our district um, which as we recall from when we did our budget it we our budget was based on the number of students we had then plus 103 take 32 out of that 103 and who knows how many more we'll have between now and the end of the year so that SOI cannot come soon enough uh, the other thing we have upcoming is uh, Mina and I are going to do office hours at um, Legacy Farms this weekend, so that would, will um, be upcoming, and hopefully some lots of good conversation to report at our next meeting. Are there others who would like to join? When oh, are yeah. you doing it? It's, it's so it's Sunday, March third, from four to six p.m. We are looking to get the space confirmed, so that's not done yet. But I think if there are others who are able to join, that would be fantastic. Just so let we'll, me know where it'll be. Yeah. yeah. We and we can figure out. We have to break up and shift, and that's yes. good, that's a good. Maybe do four to five and five to six shifts. Right. Um, we were yeah. hoping we can get the um, there is an office community space at Legacy Farms. Um, so hoping to get that. It's not confirmed yet. There's an empty swimming pool too. Is that is right? Really? In which we could huddle. In our winter coat. Oh, maybe ice skate. Is it an outdoor swimming pool? <laughs> yes, it is, Nancy. Yes, it is. Just trying to figure Just out my attire for there. that. Got to use the space we have. There we go. Uh, all right, so we can discuss that offline. Who would like to? Who is able to and would like to do and figure out what shifts would work for that? So we have that. Then we also have on next Tuesday, the fifth, we have a meeting with the legislators. Both Carolyn Dykema and Karen Spilko will be at the Board of Selectmen for a joint meeting with us. Uh, if there are things that you guys would like to have addressed with the state legislators, please email me so that I can convey that ahead to them. Um, pardon my ignorance, but can you tell me what this meeting will be about? So it is a an opportunity that was set up, I think, by the Board of Selectmen for the legislators to give an update on things that are going on in the state. And if there are particular concerns that we have, we can ask them to have a conversation with, for example, one concern I have is about the impact of enrollment and growth in the town. And is there something the state could do to help us? Um, for example, if you know we could get in quickly with the MSBA or if there's anything else the state can do, at the very least for the legislators to be aware of what our concerns are and I'm sure there may be others that you guys have and there are some I'm sure that the Board of Selectmen has that have nothing to do with us but well they do as residents but not as school committee members so. and I think that that was it Nancy that you know the reports the oh, school yes. committee thank you. chair report <laughs> thank you uh, that you could use as the basis right? so yes so that's so if you have things that pop up into your you know mind between now and 
then it would allow me to reach out to them so that if they need to do some background information to be able to speak on it in the meeting, it would just give them a heads up if there's more they need to know. And one of the other things we were also hoping yeah. is that we can, if we can get some numbers in terms of the gap with the foundation budget and yes. um, right. which some of the work you have done for tech, mm -hmm. um, if that could be used as well, sure. right? Mm -hmm backing it up with some data. So that was the thing that I couldn't remember. Before. That's right. That's it, it all comes back. Uh, so that's and then we will like we had discussed move our regular business that would have been on the seventh will follow right after that. There is not a lot of business right after that. I think there were two agenda items so it won't be a super long meeting because we're covering everything urgent tonight. Then on uh, March, well, you already covered March 9th, uh, but then March 30th, I don't know if I threw this out to you guys before, is Hopkinton 101, which is an event at the library. Uh, the school committee has been invited to have our own little table to talk about some of what we do. It's 10 to 2. I would love it if we could put something together to meet people that are in. We could even, we could post it so we could all be there if people want to be there. I think that'll be great. I, I think it was very successful last year. It was a lot, of, right? a lot of people going through. It's a great opportunity, and we could even kind of toss that in as, as sort of a casual office hours for people that want to talk about whatever their concerns are. Sure. So what date is it, Nancy? It's March 30th okay. from 10 to 2 at the library. I like the idea of posting it so we can all go. Yeah. Because yeah. I think it, do, it does oh, yeah. turn into an office hours. And it should. Exactly. Yeah. Let me make a note. I'll be there for CPAC. Well, so maybe we could we could make sure that we're positioned next to CPAC because I would love to hear what people are saying with CPAC as well. So that is great. Then that that is all I have for tonight. Are there people with that have liaison reports that because it has been a little while since we've met? I have a couple of things. Um, one is the community communications group met. Um, you know, it was unexpected because we thought we were only going to have the HCAM NPO workshop. I think I gave that update last time when we met. Um, so, um, Jim Cousins from HCAM wanted to kind of debrief as to what we learned from the NPO workshop. There was a lot of interest in the community to understand how to use social media and whatnot. So, there were folks who have taken that on to kind of create a 101 on how to go about uh, you know creating your web page and whatnot there was also a request about creating a volunteer page town-wide volunteer needs we talked a little bit also about internships um, around the town and if that was something of interest and so i have some work to do to kind of figure out uh, through you dr kamna as to what that would entail that you know i understand it's fairly rigid uh, you know very uh, the process and uh, how many hours and whatnot so trying to understand that as part of the work there um, so it, it was a good conversation we actually had um, a lot of people turn up you know the, the membership of the group seems to be increasing um, we just decided pretty much last minute we were kind of thinking whether to have the meeting or not we ended up having it anyway um, the one comment uh, you know I shared about uh, you know participation for the focus groups um, some feedback that was shared was you know sometimes if the if the emails get sent on Friday evenings it's hard for people mm -hmm. um, because you know all of us 95 percent of emails we get are junk and so the five person just uh, staying on top of that so these are some feedback that was given i i don't know what is the scientific basis for it but i wonder if there are some any scientific studies around what's a good time to communicate and uh, receive that partnership yeah i think on our end georgette just kind of piles them all up and all the information that goes out typically goes out on friday afternoon right. so we could change that to Monday morning. Right. And, you know, I'm, I, I don't know what's the basis behind it before we shift anything. Right. I, I don't know if you shift it to Monday, if you'll suddenly, you know, get <laughs> We're too busy. Right, double the number. Right. So I would like to see, um, you know, if there is any scientific basis to it mm -hmm. and if these are best practices that could be adopted across the community, the various groups that we have. So that was one. The other one was on the school committee menu website. Uh, there's some work that's ongoing. I um, need some help from all the members. I, there's still some gaps on the subcommittees. Um, and I, I will send those out to you guys, whatever is remaining, if we can get that. The other one was with the pictures. I know a friend who wanted uh, a colleague who wanted her picture removed. 
and another colleague whose picture is too small. So maybe if we can standardize the size of the pictures, it will be really nice. And you can send your favorite picture kayaking or doing whatever that interests you, whatever shows your spirit and whatever you're happy with. But I think we agree to have pictures, right? So it would really be nice to make it uh, look neat and nice. So can you just email what size sure. picture you want? That sounds and good. And then do we send it to Linda Henderson? Linda Henderson would be perfect. Great. Thank you. Okay. Um, so that's it. And I think we have a couple of other things, items coming up on yep. the agenda later. I don't know when the last time I gave you a marathon school report, and it's not very exciting. But, and we have been meeting uh, once a month just to pay invoices and any few, very few punch list troubleshooting things going on, but small. So I figure I'll share this with you. But it's not. Yeah, it's mostly at this point. It's paying invoices and, and, and just punch list. Um, and then I did want to mention um, Sue McClure is like a lifesaver with the minutes. So she's awesome. So. Um, you know, it's, a, it's an ongoing thing that, you know, happens in the back room, but she's the, did I say it wrong? No, I don't think I, I just realized that. I'm thinking. Yeah, the the gonna she's going to be a rock star this time. Yeah. I feel like she, No, she's wants. awesome. Yeah. She has just been, it's, it's sometimes it's, it's within just a couple of days, and I think she yeah. must just lock herself at home and just watch video. And, and so anyway, I have to say thank you to her because she's been fantastic with that and turning it around very quickly. I also have to imagine that to catch the, flavor of our conversation you probably she probably has to watch some parts of what we've done several times multiple times i, I would think and uh, as yeah. interesting as we feel like we are i'm not sure it would be um she wants interesting to fast forward some of those times might not be as interesting sure. but yeah um and then the last piece is um the um center school reuse committee i i'm not sure actually the official date that it was dissolved but it has been dissolved so i figure i would report that back to you because that was something um for which I was a member and now no longer exists. So, you know. Feeling a hole in your Yes, in your life. yes, desperately seeking liaison role. So you're, you're seeking a liaison role? What? <laughs> <laughs> no, if, if you are, there's, uh, there's something for your consideration. Oh, thank you. All right, let's look at that some other time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, right, but, that, I but I think that okay. group did such a fabulous job. They, they, right? It was an incredible Judge. group of people. They were really, really dedicated, and they came up with some great ideas. So hopefully some of them will come to fruition. And I'm not blowing you off. We'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay, go ahead. Just one little update from CPAC. We have two board members going to the Voices of the Community Conference oh. on the 9th of March. So another reason that it might be nice to offer another date, because some CPAC people will be away for that. What is that, Nick? Um, getting together with other parents and faculty and staff who work in special ed. And in just Hockington or a sort of no, Metro no, West? No, it's, or it's a Metro West. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's organized by the Federation of Children with Special Needs. Nice. And is Monday the support group this coming Monday? This Monday is the support group at 6 p.m. at the library. Yeah. Thank you. And all are welcome who need support. Especially me. <laughs> I just have a quick um, hop coalition on uh, March 5th, Popular Day, is um, filming or screening the film If Only They'd Known at the Hopkinton High School Library from 6 to 7.30. It is, um, it's a really impactful film and there'll be discussion, sort of breakout and discussion following mm -hmm. that talks about um, mixing alcohol and prescription medications and that very dangerous um, effects that that can have. And the, the film is centered on the story of a uh, college sophomore. So it's really applicable to high school and older families and um, college students if they're home on break. It would be very um, important for them to come see it. And uh, in fact, a lot of colleges show this film because it is definitely geared toward um, sort of older kids. So. So the the one that I did not already touch on is that the bu budget advisory group is meeting on Monday. So I will update on Tuesday when we meet what happens there. And then uh, our public hearing with appropriations, the date has not been set yet. I did check in yesterday with Mike Manning, and he is working uh, with Norman, our town manager, to figure out the dates for each department's public hearing. But I will get that date to you guys as soon as I have it. So I would anticipate sometime in the next few weeks. All right, so do we, 
want to take anything out of order if we want to move up the website? We certainly can because they're all here. Yeah, it would sure. seem like, it, unless you all were hoping to stay for the <laughs> duration. No, let, let's well, put them out of their set grade. That'd be nice. <laughs> Your day starts early. All right, so do you guys want to come sit up here? Pretty chair yeah, come on up. <laughs> so I, I just, while you guys are moving up, I just want to recognize that back in the summer when we had, you know, commissioned this subcommittee, it was not clear how many times you guys would meet and how in depth you guys would do. And I know a lot of work was done on this, and greatly appreciate everything that you have done. And thank you. Forward to hearing your report. Okay, so I think I'm going to start, and then Mr. Ghosh is going to take over. Um, but if you guys want to just introduce yourselves, that would be great. Hi, everybody. I'm Kelly Scaff. I'm a parent in the district. I have three children in the district, one at the Marathon School, one at the Elmwood School, and one at the Middle School. And I'm Vanessa Bellello. I'm the principal of the Hopkins School and was one of the um, members of the committee this time around as well. Yeah. So I apologize, I don't have the list of committee members in our update. Um, it is posted on the school committee website, and so people can um, log in and take a look. We've had great participation from our star, our star team, um, parents, um, and staff members from around the district, and it's been really helpful to inform this work and Absolutely. represent the whole community. So um, I think everybody has contributed, and Absolutely. it's been um, it's been a really a nice blessing. Yeah. So I'm mean, Kelly, and just my hat. To you. I mean, we've had early, early morning meetings. <laughs> uh, parents have participated at all hours, mornings, <laughs> middle of the day, evening. So we we greatly appreciate the time that you've put into to helping us. It's been great. So thank you for doing that. I have no idea how to work this. I believe, Doctor oh, okay. Kavanaugh, you have the <laughs> remote. Got the yeah. think, uh, oh, thanks. Thank that. you. We fight for this at my house. <laughs> Okay, so we just have a quick, we put in the packet tonight the fundamentals of what we're going to ask for, um, but then we'll just have a few framing slides just so we can frame our discussion. And I apologize, we put hot links in the presentation not realizing we can't get to them from here. So um, I'll just talk to a couple of things. Just to remind everybody uh, where we started, um, it was in September that we founded this committee, um, and our charter was... Our challenge was to oversee the design, development, and implementation of the new Hoppington School District website, including all the pages up to the department level, so not the classroom level, um, and uh, excluding the learning management system. So big charter. Um, we haven't done this in many years. At least so nine it's years. At least yeah. nine years. Um, just a couple of facts for people who are listening um, about the customer that is Hoffington Public Schools. We have over a $45 million operating budget. We have over 2,000 web pages on our current site. We have um, over 20 links to external applications, about 7,000 links in all. Um, we have over 3,700 students, 500 plus employees, 18,000 residents. Um, this is a site that gets a lot of traffic, a lot of use, um, and we have a wonderful team of four people who support <laughs> this, um, and they do it in addition to all the other work in the district. So um, this is a big project, and we have a really strong team at the core that's um, driving this. So next slide. So we started out, I know this is very small for folks, but we started out talking about how to find out the requirements, and we um, did uh, two fundamental um, events here. In October, we did a user survey. Um, and I, again, I'll share these slides so people can follow the links if they're interested. We got response from a broad mix of people, students, parents, um, community members, and employees of the district. And the survey, um, did a few things. It confirmed our known requirements, which were around accessibility, um, having a um, responsive site um, that's fully functional on, on all devices, and having translation capability. We knew that we needed those, and the survey confirmed that. Um, we also found um, new functional requirements that were a priority. Um, the ones that I have listed here, calendaring was number one by far, um, finding out what's happening and when. Um, and where, this is an added bonus, 
uh, school information. Again, it's very information driven, the needs that people expressed. It wasn't a lot of more pictures of my kids, although those are nice, but they really were hungry for information. Staff directory, um, access to district tools and pages, and in some cases, payment and forms, transaction processing. So those are the, the main things that came out. And then um, there was another section that really touched on um, a lot of factors around ease of use. It was whether it's page layout, how we architect our information, the, how are the menus structured, a whole bunch of things around ease of use. We found that our site was not tremendously easy to use. And we used that information from the survey to come up with a, um, a user hands-on user forum, which we held on October 23rd. Um, at the user forum, we had people go through tasks, and we watched them, and we saw people struggle with um, need, not knowing the right insider terminology to find what they needed. Lots of ease of use issues surfaced uh, as we watched people struggle with our current site. Um, and we found out that we uh, have a lot of insider knowledge required to navigate right now, so we want to improve that as we go forward. Um, and a lot of, we thought maybe we needed more quick links, but what we really need from coming out of that is really effective search. We do need quick links, but people really want good search, which we currently don't have. So, yeah, it's, I was surprised just to find that a large number of parents or people searching the sites just start within Google. So they're not even just navigating to the site first; they're just typing in the search in Google, and that and that needs to be enhanced. So we'll yeah. address that. Um, so we took the those pieces of input, the survey results and the forum results, and then we put together with the team as a whole, we put together through um, December a requirements document with a lot of requirements, um, which you can, again, you'll be able to link to, but um, it basically included what the technology department already had for requirements, which we confirmed, what the community raised as priorities, um, what the website subcommittee added, a lot of things around um, what we want from our vendor as a partner, kind of professional qualities we want from the vendor, and uh, project management and so forth. So we put this whole packet together, and then Mr. Ghosh and his team sent it out at the end of the year, just before the start of January. And uh, how many vendors total did we uh, send it we to? We sent it to probably close to 10, but didn't hear from all of them. So we ended up hearing from about six in the end. Yeah. So, we this, so then we conducted two and a half days worth of vendor presentations. Um, the six, anyone who responded was invited in to share their information. So we, we heard from School Messenger, Edleo, Final Sight, American Eagle, Sterling, and Blackboard, who is our current provider. Um, we then met as a subcommittee on the 28th, and we ranked all the vendors. We had a bunch of questions. And then on February 15th, we um, went through and picked out our top three, and we've come to a now a recommendation for you guys to consider. The top three vendors who gave us quotes were School Messenger. Um, School Messenger does our current messaging. Oh, actually, you want to talk about this, I think. That's okay. I mean, I'll pass it to you. Yeah, so if you look in at the current slide, um, after the rankings, we had these top three. Um, within the top three, um, School Messenger uh, was one of them, Final Site, and then Blackboard. As Amanda said, Blackboard is our current uh, website vendor. Uh, School Messenger is a current vendor, but in a different capacity. They are primarily used for our communication tool. So all of our emergency messaging, uh, broadcast messaging, all is, is currently uh, used through School Messenger. Uh, then Final Site, which was a kind of a new, a new uh, vendor to us. Um, so what we did from those three, we basically ranked them against all of the criteria. The committee decided that these were the top three. Among these, they decided that Final Site was the highest uh, ranked um, site. School Messenger was uh, second, and Blackboard was third. Um, so the price difference between the, the three, School Messenger, uh, in, in terms of the design process, uh, would be $23,750, with a renewal cost of around $3,700. Final site uh, design cost is at $45,000 with an annual renewal of $11,000. And then Blackboard, um, their design cost was $23,000 roughly, and renewal is around $9,000. So quite a range between the three vendors. Um, some of the differences, I think, is important to highlight between the three, the three companies. Um, and I could start with Blackboard, and obviously we have other people here to kind of comment on, on their opinions. 
But Blackboard, even though it's our current vendor, we feel like they've grown too large um, and their customer service has fallen down. So the first concern we had with them was that they just weren't even getting back in touch with us and, and uh, early enough fashion. So emails bouncing from our current vendor was kind of surprising. Uh, they canceled on us for our first presentation. They were the last person to get the proposal in. So uh, being a current customer, I was pretty disappointed in the, in the customer service that we got from them. Um, in addition to that, we have just felt that their designs um, just didn't really resonate with the committee as well. Um, people didn't connect with their designs as well. They didn't do a good enough job kind of highlighting the process that they would take us through on the project management side of the house. So those led to some concerns for us uh, with Blackboard. Um, School Messenger, obviously pretty competitive on the renewal price. Um, we thought that they have known good customer service because we obviously used them for the last two years. So we know what their customer service is like. Uh, it's pretty strong. Uh, another benefit they had was a redesign or reskin uh, as possible in three to four year period uh, no, at no charge. Uh, there was no extra cost for unlimited storage. Uh, and they had some pretty functional designs um, that I think were good, but just didn't, in my opinion, pop. And, um, and so we felt that they were lacking in the design category a little bit. Um, Final Sight, um, we felt had the most robust package. We felt that they were going to guide us through the process uh, in a careful manner. They had a, a plan laid out on how we would do that. Uh, they kind of highlighted the areas and the tasks that they would help us do. And so... For us, labor is a concern, and so I think they're willing to help move some of the content for us, I think was a part of that. Um, and then their designs, I think, were really powerful. So there's a lot of choice in the designs, and they were willing to go beyond just the main pages of each website. So, right, so each website has a school landing page, but they are willing to, to work with us, I think, a little deeper on the secondary pages department level pages and then the directory level pages and, and work to customize that a little more. So we felt like they were painting a better picture of how that would work for us uh, when we met with them. On top of that, even though the renewal is a little more, that renewal cost does include an advanced search functionality, which was one of the key elements that the committee, you know, and the, the community was looking for. And so that is built into the, the additional renewal cost, which will give us some advanced search features. Um, and then I'm, I'm definitely would want to hear from both of you on, on your opinions, if you don't mind, no, if they definitely. kind of share think, out what your wasn't thoughts were. Wasn't there also a savings once because the um, final site includes a product that we currently pay for separately? Yeah, correct. we have so analytics. analytics. And we analytics. have a slide coming up that will explain okay. that, but that's correct. Right. Over, overall, after, year, after next year, uh, there will be an additional savings on the renewal once the analytics tool goes away. And we can share that in a minute. What's your perspective? I'd say when I take a step back and I think about what was on that big long requirements list and what were the objectives that we set out to go do, search, translation, calendaring, they kind of hit on all of them and they were the standout in every category. So we left the meetings and kind of universally everyone liked them the best. They thought that they sort of stood out among the pack. The concern was, of course, around, oh, they're going to be the most expensive because they were differentiated from the other ones. Um, the search capability was excellent, and they had capabilities like the newslettering that was differentiated that none of the other providers yeah. came with. Um, it was a step up versus a step sideways. Yeah. Um, I have one question. You note that um, the previous, if, uh, was it the same one? If oh, you don't sorry, mind go going back. back. I, just, I went ahead, sorry. Uh, no um, so you mentioned that uh, many public schools in Massachusetts use school messenger. Were there other, um, in, are there schools which are using final site as well? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, these, okay. these three schools are, these three companies probably have a majority of the, the business nationally in okay. terms of school public website, schools. public and private school. I would say final site probably has a little bigger market in the private school yeah. industry than the other two. Um, Final site is based in Connecticut as well, so they're local, okay. which is nice, localish. One other question I have um, on that is, you know, again, you note good service for school messenger for Final Site. Did you get a chance to have some kind of a reference check as to how's their service? I mean, they're award-winning um, on on bunch of things. You note know, there, 
Uh, but I'm just wondering if you had a chance. Yeah, to I mean, they've in. gave several references, and we talked to you know a few schools, um, and it seems like they have um, really outshined other companies. Uh, some of them have just recently moved to Final Site, and they had talked about uh, the project management being really good, um, and that um, you know even even other vendors just kind of talking about how they've lost customers recently to final site uh, and primarily for some of their project management skills and their designs. Uh, so the competition between the, the companies is, is pretty stiff, but I think uh, the service that we've seen just in the, in the vetting process from them was, was much higher than, than the other two companies. And final site, just to say, to piggyback on that, they, from their first presentation to their white papers, to their um, present presentation of their quote, they, clearly um, emphasize professional services as a core competency so they're not only you know pitching a solution over to you but service seems to be built into what they do which um, was something that again going back to the fact that we have a four-person team that manages all the technology for the district we like the idea of having a partner that um, is going to be there for us and, and really emphasize um, service so Priority. And we do have a list of sample sites. I know I don't think we have access. We could show you a bit based on the time. I don't know if we could do that, but we do have a number of sample sites of, of Final Site and all the other vendors that you're welcome to, to look at. Um, and some of those are just our local schools. Um, no, I am all for going for the best. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we have talked about this, okay. right? And right. I think, you know, you talked about all the customers and within the town, but I know so many others who are outside the town who are looking at our website. The website is the face mm -hmm. of the district for so many people, and this is the way everybody communicates and looks at information. Mm -hmm. So I have no doubt to go for the best in my mind. That's my voice. But I'm just checking a few things and sure. asking. I, I could see, speak to being skeptical of the, the cost difference going into that sort of final level, um, thinking about what that difference in cost as far as personnel. You know, I'm thinking, oh, goodness, you know, that, that is a lot of money in a school budget, um, especially a budget like Hopkinton that is not like some of those other school districts in this state and certainly not um, a private school budget. And so when we have limited funds, what really, to me, sold Final Sight was thinking back to um, the labor and um, the bare bones work, um, skeletal crew that we have, the, especially at the elementary level, not so much at the secondary level. Um, administrators are the ones who do all, pretty much all of the updates on the websites. And to have something that's very user friendly and that is going to create um, a good look for us, but also easy for us to do those updates on when we don't have positions like a webmaster mm -hmm. and we're doing those things ourselves. So what I really came down to is if you're not going to have people doing all of those updates, having something that's going to be very user friendly for the user, but also for the people producing the prod, the, the, mm -hmm. the information and putting it out there, I saw that as a product that I would be able to make updates and um, not be nearly as cumbersome of how challenging it is to do things like resize photos. I mean, I spend a lot of time trying to get those photos right mm -hmm. on the current website, and that excites me um, to be able to do that. The other thing that really sold me, both as a, a parent of school-age students, knowing how complex at the secondary level, athletics and um, certainly performing arts, the idea of having this special module, I think, was very exciting to see. I think um, the complexity of all of those performing groups, the theater events, the music performances, and knowing and keeping all of those updated from departments, whether it's sports or performing arts, music department heads, um, I thought that was a really very nice feature that I think a lot of districts struggle with how to get that information out in a timely fashion and having that module which is not just an athletics module but has capabilities to do things for performing arts was very attractive even yeah. though yeah. at my level it's not as needed it would be a really nice tool and so that will what she's referring to is that will that will this cost will include the redesign of the athletics page and the nice thing about the module is that it integrates things like social media and calendaring and it kind of gives you a way to view multiple sports quickly and easily and then they each have their 
in the end have their own landing page where you can have coaches information their own calendars uh, and it's an easy way to kind of maintain it and keep it up so that that would be part of the the um, the final site package the one last piece was the um, piece of the bulletins or newsletter mm -hmm. functionality right now um, all of us administrators challenged with uh, challenged with making sure that it is accessible um, because of the products uh, it happens to be the newsletter site that I use does translate, but it's been a challenging piece for us to have those um, in an electronic newsletter format and make sure that it's accessible to everybody um, in its current. So to have something that would easily be able to take content from other areas and create something that's a, you know an update from a school, I think for the community's perspective would be a great way to continue um, striving for a lot of communication with parents in the community. One last question mm -hmm. on content management. I guess one that's one of the biggest challenges, right? Mm -hmm. Keeping it updated. Was that part of your considerations and was that part of the charge um, in terms of, you know, we have this site which is easy to navigate and I hear the pain of using the current um, site for setup and doing any kind of changes. Um, but in terms of content upkeep, were this part of the discussions? Well, that was part of a lot of the discussions. Mm -hmm. okay. And I think when we reviewed the vendors, I think that they are going to do a lot of the work up front to get the, the website in a condition that we want. And then there are only going to be certain content fields that department level people or principals or certain groups within departments can edit. But it will be user friendly and it's not going to completely rechange the look and feel of each page when those edits are made right so if you're going to edit the curriculum page you're going to edit a certain part of it and that's it it's not going to change you know the staff directory on that page it's not going to change the photos on that page and so it is in essence a little more locked down than maybe our current one is but i think that's the direction we want to move towards um, so that we have a little more consistency in design but also that we are able to kind of keep it uniform and, and, and easy for people to navigate. Because that's a big part of navigation, right, is knowing where to look for things and making sure that's consistent. So that was a huge part of the discussion when we set the criteria before we started looking at vendors. That's great. So in terms of upkeep and whatnot, there would be a rhythm that's shared and utilized across the district. Right? Correct, yeah. So great. we've kind of out outlined like which departments are in charge of which pages and which content. Uh, part of the initial work and that will be part of the ongoing work um, getting them trained but then also on the new site the expectations for updating the content and the time frame for when that information would be up to date on top of that we're hopeful with the approved budget that we still have a stipend you know in the budget um, so even though there's no full-time webmaster position there is hopefully um, some funds for a stipend that will help maintain um, weekly some of this work, uh, whether it's updating photos or events and calendaring, we'll have someone kind of working on that. So I think that will also help keep things up to date. Fantastic. Right. Yeah. We so you were just, quick. can I ask a question sure. about that? Because that, you're reading my mind over there. I think, um, you know, all the things that you've mentioned are, are very important, but at the very beginning of the year, we talked about the idea of maybe a webmaster. And I guess, did, did you discuss sort of the pros and cons of the, I mean, the site, I, I agree, something mm -hmm. needs to be done. But versus, I mean, we had to pull the webmaster from the budget this year, but final site's numbers could almost fuel a webmaster's salary. Yeah. So to balance, how do you feel about... In the first year, you mean? Correct. Yeah. Correct. And then that person's job would be to maintain the... the what, so I mean, you know, where, how's the how's the scale tip in your head versus between those two things? Because it's a significant cost, and I'm with me, and I would rather have the best thing. But at the same time, like I feel like we we frequently are forced to go with the lower bid because we're our hands are tied. Yeah. And so, how do you balance this sixty thousand dollar cost with we could have had a person, or someday could have a person taking care of all this for us in house? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I, my initial thoughts are a lot of the work in that cost is the design cost, and it's right. that's part of making a website uh, viewable, uh, aesthetically pleasing, easy to navigate. So that is the core work, and I think once that's done, updating the content um, still is needs to be in the hands of the experts in those fields right. updating it. So, Ideally. you know, a web 
person could help with some of the basic stuff, but they're still going to, you know, ha they can't really create that content necessarily, right? So if those people are trained to do that and to are able to update that information themselves, um, I think having the design done by someone else and not having the web position, I think long term is, is going to probably save us more money, okay. uh, in my opinion. And other people can speak to that, but I think... Um, the expertise of a team of people putting together a project versus an individual, I think, is a little bit risky. Like, because then you're you're looking for somebody that hopefully has the design capacity that meets the needs of our district. And if they don't, then you've got to fire that person. There's a whole bunch of other complications I think that go with an individual person versus a company that has a team of designers uh, who's worked with hundreds of schools. Right knows schools in and out and you might find someone that does that but you might not so i think the risk reward i think is safer with a company at this point um if that if that helps answer your question a little bit i think at best we could get one year of a webmaster because the ongoing i mean we it's only the first year is the bubble year for the design so um just to echo Ashok, I think we were really looking for a strong partner because we want to get it right. We want a good style guide that will then make the follow-on updates less daunting. Like right now, I think we don't have, you know, as you said, the right amount of restriction. We don't have a good style guide. We don't, and we're investing up front in getting that stuff locked in so that the ongoing maintenance is much more manageable. So, and then, even to a point where, and when he's mentioning style guide, like there's no, you know, the font colors are going to be set to a certain requirements just to be a to meet accessibility needs and other things. So that they're going to come in, they have the fonts that they can choose from, the colors they can choose from, and they can type in the content. And so it is limiting in some ways, but it also leads to that consistency that we need and that we're some sometimes missing now. And those ADA accessibilities or um, language accessibility features i think are so required for us but finding a webmaster again with all of those skill sets in one person whereas a company that does this all the time has a product that we can start with and then say these are our unique needs in hopkinton and can comes with an implementation day. methodology right. and comes with a set of professionals that no. have done it repeatedly yeah. over the and that other piece the which i'm assuming you're going to get to again is that whole analytics piece and then looking at what the cost is currently the yearly cost and that's, that's the other one. piece that yeah. i think you said you're going to hit on yeah also oh, is... so there, there was one other thing to mention that only final site mentioned but it does relate to this ongoing ownership piece they said you know a lot of schools struggle with the same things whether it's content management the currency of the content that you have on, on your page and so they have they connect customers with other customers and create best practice forums for discussions on certain topics so that by leveraging them we could get plugged into other other school districts that are challenged with similar maintenance things that we have which if you went with a webmaster you would never you would never get um, so this is a hard sorry, sorry. Um, I had a question on the calendar and I know you had reached out to kind of work through the community communications calendar also um, the HCAM community calendar um, and I'm, I'm interested in making sure that as events uh, you know for instance the one that you have for hop coalition mm -hmm. or um, the forum that we have coming up on the 9th things of this nature if they can seamlessly you know uh, go into the community calendar or any athletic events or arts and sports and whatnot. That would be a fantastic thing to. And I, I, we are going to shoot for that. I just want to have a little bit of caution when you use the word seamless. When we, when we refer to the athletic events, I've had multiple calls and emails into the MIA and have not even heard back from them in regards to the ability to export out calendars from them. So even when you look at their calendars, there are no iCal connections or, or anything to allow you to pull those events. So the the downside and seamlessness is meaning that we are going to have to put athletic events into the, the website, our website. We're going to have to enter them. Um, there's no way around that, and that's not going to affect any vendor we choose. So regardless of what direction we go, we're still going to have to physically enter dates for athletics because there's no way to pull them in as of right now from the MIA. So the only workaround is to work with D and maybe come up with some other way to, when they do post an event, that it maybe goes to both places at the same time, some sort of sync that we have to be creative about. 
But so I just want to caution you about that. But once we populate everything in the district's website, we will be able to push those out and people will be able to grab those feeds from our site. So the, the core events will be published in our website and then other people outside agencies will be able to grab those calendars based on what they want. So they'll be organized, they'll be tagged, so that if you just want the Elmwood calendar just like it is now, you can grab those events. Uh, if you want the athletic schedules, you can grab those events. Um, but I just want to be careful and warn people that there's not going to be an exact sync with the MIA as of right now. And maybe it's a conversation, you know, especially with knowing what we've been talking about, <coughs> if we could have that even not waiting until end of March is when we were talking about. Um, that would be nice, just to kind yeah. of understand expectations. But the, the good thing around that is that we're hoping that this uh, tool, the athletics module, even has an app, a mobile app for coaches. Yeah. So okay. the idea that, okay, field has changed, the event has changed, a coach from a mobile app can update that, and that syncs with the website and updates it. So a parent now traveling pulls up that event on our page, they can now see that change live and be able to adjust which we sort of get with the MA, but not quite. Those last minute changes don't quite always make it on that site. So I think by training coaches and, and, and uh, leveraging that tool, we might be able to work around some of the problems that we have with the existing calendars. That's great. So. Uh, just to talk about cost, um, since this is a big thing. So currently, and I'm having a hard time reading from here, but I think our current solution is Blackboard, and it's around $8,200 a sure. year. Um, we also have to supplement that with a separate analytics package, which we, for which we pay about $4,500 a year. We're in year two of a three-year contract. Um, when we move to our new, if we move to final site, analytics is built into the cost. That's, so we, as soon as our analytics contract expires in 2020, we don't pay that $4,500 anymore. And our actual, you know, so if you actually look at year on year, um, in 2020, we would pay the $11,000 final site um, cost. We still have to pay the $4,500 to finish our contract with our analytics provider. But in 2021, that comes off. And actually, we're saving money over our renewal um, on with Blackboard. Because $11,000 that we'll pay year on year is less than the $8,200 plus the $4,500 that we're currently paying. So year one is tough. But as we move on, we're actually lower cost than what we currently have. The other thing is this project was budgeted in 2019 by Mr. Gosling Technology Department as their priority project using, I think, E-rate e um, rebate money that you got from technology investments. Correct. Not, so this project is not, we're within the budget that was originally earmarked, um, which I think is great news. And, uh, you know, we can get a lot for the money that was budgeted. We're not asking for anything additional. Can I just... For clarification, so the E rate would cover the forty-five thousand. That's correct. Dollar. So there's no additional that, surprise. It, that money can only be used for technology. Is that accurate? That's correct. Yes. I remember that that was the starting of the yeah. subcommittee, the seventeen thousand um, dollar ask or or the funding that was available at that time. Um, I think this is great work. Uh, it looks like you've all gone through a lot of, uh, you know, every little detail out there, and you've vetted it all out. Um, I, I wonder if Ms. Rothamick has any thoughts on the cost and if this is something. So you're saying that the 17 uh, or the 45,000, the first time is 45,000, mm -hmm. right? Correct. So that's all covered. That's okay. Mm -hmm. That's not impact. The school messenger, the messaging that we're using through school messenger, would mm -hmm. that be absorbed into final set or would we continue to no, use we school would, messenger? We, we would continue to use school messenger I mean, until at some point. I mean, they, final site does have their own communication tool, yep. but it's a, still an additional cost. And I think at this point, um, we're happy with school messenger, yep. and I don't think there's necessarily a need to, at this point, unless we see future advantages to moving to final site, that's such a process already to get people enrolled in that and to get people comfortable with that tool <laughs> trying to do less churning so that a lot of we learn right we yes. learn the, the tools that we have so we're very happy with that tool and i think it's working unless you have heard otherwise I, I, um, not, are, you, I are you happy with school messenger i find that uh, interface very difficult um, it's, it's not very you know 
user friendly. I'm hoping, um, you know, this one that you're coming up, it's going to blow us away. Is what yeah, I mean, I'm happy to learn more about the school messenger interface. I think some of it is uh, a, it's just educating people to know that it exists. I know you had an earlier conversation about people missing messages on Fridays, and, and that's a busy time to kind of message people. But the reality is if people get into the interface, there's a log. All the messages that have ever been sent by us to your kids or your kids' schools are all there in the history. So you can go back and visit every single message that's ever been sent, either on a web browser or on a mobile app. So I think, yes, working through the glitches of making sure people can get logged into that and they know how to, to set that up, that, that is available on the current site. So, um, yeah, I think the customer service has been great um, in terms of the, the rates and the timing of getting messages out and their servers and, and sending out all the emergency messages have been, have been good. Um, so, so far we've been pretty happy with them. And so the subcommittee recommends that we stick to school messaging. To, to be fair, the subcommittee did not evaluate messaging. That was not yeah, within the scope of our yeah, charter, yeah. so we okay. did not look at messaging. Okay. I, it just, I, in looking at school messenger, it popped into yeah. my head. The other question I had is about policy and mm -hmm. hosting our policy. Is that policy on the new website with the advanced search, will that be more user friendly for people to look through our policies? Yeah, well, so we, we did, the policy subcommittee did talk about um, whether or not we wanted our policies hosted by MASC. Right. We also talked to Mr. Ghosh and um, Ms. Henderson, who's doing a lot of work right now to um, convert our policies to HTML so that they're fully searchable and she's reformatting them. And by keeping them in house, she's well on her way already um, yeah. to cleaning them up. She okay. was showing me her work, it's great. We're going to keep the policies in house. Yep. They will look like they belong with the same design, the same look and feel as our website, so it won't look funny. Um, so we're, we're all comfortable with that. We talked about the options, but we're all comfortable with keeping that in house. The, um, yeah, so we're and we searchable. Can, we can yes. try to design it however you decide and the, the, the subcommittee decides, but it could look like I think what we're, we're trying to receive with the MS, I always. MASC. MASC site. So it can have that same look and feel. Where you know you will still have your categories, right. um, and then you'll have the individual policies. Um, but I think by adding them as HTML and then tagging them correctly with this new company, you also then just straight from Google could even say, "All right, I need to look at the acceptable use policy, right. Hopkinton's acceptable use policy," and that that should pull that up right from the Google search even and pull right. us into the policy page. So I think just by converting it, re resurfacing. Uh, the look and feel, and then the advanced search will help improve functionality. And with our analytics tools in Final Sight, we'll be able to make sure that the accessibility continues. Like we have control over making sure that it continues to meet our accessibility standards. So the, the accessibility pieces that you've talked about are huge to me, and I, I, I that is a big selling point because it sounds like it's much better with Final Sight than the other two. I, we, I think, like Vanessa said, when I looked at the Cost initially, I was a little bit skeptical when I saw the forty-five thousand dollars, but mm -hmm. I do feel like some of the features you've mentioned, combined with the fact that it comes out of the rebate that is only available for technology, it, it's not competing with adding, a, you know, an aid or something someplace else. That puts my mind at ease. I, I thought I was done with my questions, but I have uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, the curriculum part. That was one of the other things that you were working on. Would that become available, uh, and would that be merged with this new site? Yeah, so we're working, you know, with um, Ms. Parsons to kind of, and the principals, to talk about what components of the curriculum we're going to make available in public. Uh, teachers are working on cleaning up the curriculum and what stages of UBD we're going to make available to parents. Um, we're still, we haven't decided on the look and feel yet, and so sure. obviously mm -hmm. we're, we'll, present some options to you and, and when we get closer to the final design of it um, we'll, we'll have some we'll need some feedback from you but I think the idea is to launch from from this site so I have a curriculum page that has um, some of that information in the background how that looks there's a couple different ways to go so we haven't figured out which direction yet we're going to go but um, it will be possible from this site and hopefully this is the last one uh -huh. Uh, is there any room for any further final negotiation? I know Ms. Rothermick is very good at it. Um, um, well, that is actually a cheaper price than what they normally 
do a package three. So a package three typically is fifty thousand dollars. So they've come down five thousand, not a ton, but they have come down five thousand on that, and they have come down, um, you know, almost two thousand dollars on the annual cost so far, uh, and through in the advanced search for us. So we have pushed on them a little bit already, but if if someone else wants to take a crack, I'm I'm open to it. We we could we could try. I'm not opposed to that. But, yeah. but fantastic job, you guys, and to yeah. your entire you. team. Great job, Amanda. And, no. and Ash yeah, Amanda's been great to work <laughs> with, and, and, and um, it's right. been great. Thank you. Should we make a motion? I yes. think we should make a motion. I would like to move to approve the choice of district website designer, final site. Right? Thank you. Second. Yes, that is I it. Second by motion by Meg and a second by Mina. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And it's unanimous, and thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank Bringing you. this morning is coming out guys. tonight. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I, I didn't quite get your name. Oh, Kelly Scaff. Kelly. Thank you so much. Thank you. We couldn't all come tonight because I didn't post this as a website subcommittee meeting, yes. so we had a few representatives. Otherwise, I'm sure we would have wanted to have been at our We'll have her back to celebrate all, yeah. the uh, launch of the new site. There so. you I go. Think it's right. Great. We look forward Thank to that. Thank you. Trisha wants one more meeting with us. At least five more. That's right. All right, Thanks. so that brings us into new business item A, which is the Hopkins School gift account. Yes, so what you have uh, before you is the Hopkins School General Mills gift um, in the amount of $525.70. And I am recommending that you accept that box top check. I move to accept it. <laughs> Second. Yeah. Motion by Meg, second by Amanda. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes, absolutely. And unanimous and so carries. And that brings us into item B, which is the Marathon School gift account. Yes, you can see that Marathon kids must be about half the size of Hopkins kids because they eat half the General Mills <laughs> product because their dollar amount is $278.20. And again, I'm recommending that we accept that check. For I move to Marathon. accept it. Second. Motion by Meg, second by Amanda. <laughs> All those in favor? Yes. Aye. Absolutely. Aye, and it so carries. Uh, and I will just say, as somebody who used to cut those box tops out for the HPTA, it is very time consuming. So thank you for the volunteers who coordinate all of that. Uh, that brings us into item C, which is the final overnight travel approval for the Hopkinton High School BPA. Yes, so the Hopkinton High School Business Professionals of America would like to travel to the Sheridan in Framingham. They will be there from March 2nd to March 4th. Um, it's a combination of things. They get to go there and compete in business and IT and communication events, um, but they also get to attend workshops in social media, career planning, social responsibilities, and that sort of thing. Uh, we have had market success, I think, in the last couple of years. Our kids have done very well. And so I am recommending that you approve an overnight field trip for them. I move to approve that overnight field trip for them. And I second. Motion by <laughs> Meg and a second by Amanda. All those in favor? Yes. Aye. 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 And good luck to the kids. And thanks yes. again to Mr. Scott for yes. the wonderful job he does. Very nice. Fantastic. All right. So and we did already the district website redesign presentation. So that will move us into item E, which is the school committee processes. And I will let you, if you want to sure. start that. Um, I guess we have been talking through the beginning of this uh, school year about uh, working through some of the processes that the school committee has, whether it is related to posting um, a meeting, how do you get an agenda item uh, on um, on the meeting, etc. So this is a formal request for the entire committee to kind of allow myself and Nancy to work on it. We had done some processes, for instance, for the minutes. So expanding that a little bit, how do we um, you know, form a subcommittee? Uh, how do we make those decisions? So things of that nature are things that we are hoping to bring back, kind of um, document that and bring that for your review and approval. So almost like a procedure processes document for the school committee. And uh, one of the things that we have heard in recent times is related to, um, for instance, our meetings, right? We all attend so many meetings, not just the school committee meetings, but all the liaison related roles. But sometimes there are emergencies that come up. Right. So if we could have some sort of a calendar, if you will, at least a month ahead mm -hmm. of these are some of the meetings that are coming up. And also what are the possible, you know, there's some business as usual, for instance, uh, things like uh, 
the travel, the, the BPA, box. right, the box jobs, you know that these are all going to come at a certain time during the year. So we earmark them and so everyone is aware ahead of time that this is when these discussions are going to happen. About the box jobs? Uh, and, and box jobs <laughs> wait, too. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I need a month's notice to know no, we're going to spend no, a minute talking no, no, about no. box jobs. So I guess the idea is this, right? So let's say we know that every year we talk about the school calendar in January. Right. So things of that nature, if you know ahead of time, parents know to plan for it, that this is when it will get done. I think right? this is fabulous. Right? So, so yeah. things of that nature, if you just have it high level, not, not getting to the level of box stops, but things that the community cares for, yeah. calling those out, rolling it all up and showing in January, these are the general topics we are likely to talk about. Yeah. And where is there room to add something new? And even like which right? meetings we have the, um, the financial review that comes at a sort of a regular... It's nice to know. It's nice for people to know if they, if they want to check in for that meeting. That's right. That's great. Yeah. And so it allows e each of us, if somebody says, you know, hey, what do you guys do? Because I know that we all know different people in the community, and somebody might come to any one of us that doesn't know the other four as well and say, hey, when are you going to be talking about the calendar? Or, hey, when yeah. are you going to do that? It allows us to have a common general understanding, even though things may be moved for one reason or another. There's a general time that we do certain things. Right. I, I think, think it's, it's a great, great idea. And I think it's good for new school committee members too because you come in and you don't necessarily yes. know when yes. things are coming in. I used to see it on social media. People want to know when the calendar is oh, yeah. up. Yeah. So yeah. I think it's good. All right. Do it. So then Thank we you. seek a motion to... I for the move to put you two to, to work. I do. <laughs> <laughs> on what we have just discussed. <laughs> okay. And then I want to second that, but I also just want to... Um, plant a seed of thought as you're going through this work and I'm, I, I love that you're volunteering for work I can't believe we have to approve it go for it but um, many of the procedures that you're going to come up with may or may not hang under um, policy like yes. we have policies about meetings I would love as we're talking about the website to name them with like the dash one dash two under the policy name if mm -hmm. they relate so that we can have that comprehensive um, sort of uh, repository of the, all of this put together. We'll, we'll come back to you for sure, Amanda. What I'm hoping is kind of create some kind of a timeline. We have to talk yeah. uh, a little bit, but I'm hoping if we put a timeline out there, we'll hopefully stick to all of that too with all the other things going on. But I think this is important work it's great. Uh, to get that sorted. So I second. I second the motion. Okay. Thank all, you. All those in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. So that is unanimous. In so it carries, and then that moves us into item F, which is the inclusion training uh, that the I had mentioned last meeting. The Youth Commission is doing a training with Visions, and they invited us to collaborate with them. And there was a presentation, uh, was it Tuesday? That's Tuesday. right, Tuesday. Tuesday. Uh, that actually Amanda and Mina went to, but I, just as a way of introducing it, I, I know that there are also opportunities to include a second module uh, that would be allow the administration to also do another group of 18 because it's they're training 18 people up to 18 people and I'll let you guys explain that more but it would be a training for the school committee the youth commission and it could include other elected leaders in town and other people in town that are not just us but it allows us the chance to collaborate on something that I think is important that we have discussed as a group wanting to make some headway with uh, in how we handle different issues of inclusion. So that is. Um, if I may request, are you able to pull that uh, notes, the observations? Uh, I can. OK, thank you. The ones that I'd sent it out, if there's any way. Oh, oh, oh. If I'm not connected. Oh, I can't. Oh, 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 anything that's yeah. on there came. Preloaded. Tonight. <laughs> oh, is that right? Okay. Yes, I'm sorry. Um, no, that's okay. I can speak to it. You know, Amanda and I uh, went and attended, um, and I, I kind of jotted down some of the discussion points. This is a group visions we, which we had um, had made a proposal last year when Dr. McLeod was here, and there was a lot of interest both from the town side, from our side, to be to look at it. Uh, when I saw it the first time, I wasn't very impressed necessarily with their presentation with when they came back with the quotes and whatnot because there was not a lot of detail. So I went into the meeting feeling, can't we get something for free first, you know, the inclusion training? 
that that's the mindset with which I went because there's a lot of material available and um, Dr. Kavna actually shared someone's name from Nadek uh, Jamil oh, yeah. who I thought um, you know he has this thing called lit love inclusion and trust I thought that was fantastic and that he would come and do training for free I, I think we should still think about it but I want to talk a little bit about what um, uh, how I received it and I would want Amanda to share some of this too um, so uh, what this gentleman from Visions did is he walked us through what are some of the possible modules if you will um, that could be used in the training this training is expected to be a joint training for both youth commission and the school committee so up to 18 members can participate it's four to six half day sessions based on the modules that we pick so half days would be about three and a half to four four hours each four to six spread over four to six days and um, the model is called train the trainer and what that would mean is this would allow attendees to use the material for further use including dissemination as long as it's not used for profit uh, the cost of this uh, training is about three to five thousand dollars and youth commission has already agreed to uh, put three thousand for towards the training um, so it should not cost us a lot to participate in it um, so some of the modules that um, this gentleman spoke to was guidelines uh, that was one of the first things he said this like could be the general terminology that everyone could talk to uh, uh, he talked about multi uh, multiculturalism he talked about historically excluded versus historically included he talked about feelings as messages that sometimes you know we are, we train ourselves that if you are angry don't express anger you know hold suppress your anger so what does that do to you so things of that nature um, he also talked about cultural sharing which I thought was an interesting idea he said, he said it, it would be a guided activity he talked about you know just because uh, so various categories if you will a white person versus a color person of color versus someone who is uh, economically advantaged versus disadvantaged um, someone who is heterosexual versus homosexual so in all of these instances you know how, how do you identify yourself and someone may have a you know a certain advantage or a privilege if you will right so he talked about that and he said we would have a guided ac activity around that he talked about modern um, oppression and the one thing uh, that stuck out for me was related to validation he talked about the need uh, we, we all need validation and uh, when we do that there are two kinds um, you know he, he drew a quadrant as we do in management all the time um, and on one side you have the essence of who you are your being and the other part is your behavior so you are giving validation either to say you're wonderful and to the fact that what you did is wonderful right so there's a difference there and it could also be that uh, or someone's crazy I don't want to look at you right um, <laughs> versus, I appreciate you looking away but we all know it's true. <laughs> versus the behavior being a little crazy right so being able to separate the being versus the behavior and the need to give feedback in a manner that you are not saying anything negative about the being the person right like who you are your essence there's nothing wrong with you so things of that nature he talked about and he um, he talked about how we never want to be in a um, you know sometimes um, if you are constantly saying your behavior is wrong you can start assuming that you're there's something wrong with your being so so things of that nature so he talked about some guided activity around that I wish you could see some of this but you know uh, maybe I'll share this with you this was also put together very late because we just had the meeting on Tuesday um, so my takeaway from all of this was we had this whole conversation about our need to talk a little bit about diversity I know Dr. Kavna is doing a lot of work related to diversity and Nancy of course initiated this conversation because Youth Commission is doing this training we're already taking a step in this direction and the need for us 
um, to be more aware as our student population is also changing, so as policies and whatnot we're looking at, being able to have that lens and being a little bit open and kind of self-reflect, where is it that I could be better, if you will? Um, and how can we make accommodations, not just in terms of cultural diversity, but uh, diversity in terms of abilities, right? Um, how do you uh, how do you talk to that? How do you understand that better? And, and the need for inclus inclusivity, if you will. So I thought that um, these are my observations, uh, just my one voice, that it's a good step towards partnering with Youth Commission on issues affecting youth and families. Um, and it's also a strong first step towards a long learning process, given the changing culture and fabric of the town, our state and the country in general, just being better educated and being more aware of it, if you will. It's not something that, you know, we would all get awareness to in a day. Um, and it'll take a long time. We'll have to keep repeating all of this. And the learning um, will help guide policies uh, listening and answering to community needs as they come to us. Um, and I was hoping if we could have, because there is a room for 18 members, if we do choose to move forward with this, perhaps look to have two um, school admin or staff members join us and hopefully link some of the work that we are doing. And I think the training has potential to be utilized by other leaders in the community. This, this is just the beginning, if you will. And, uh, you know, there's nothing that stops us from pursuing what is available for free. For instance, Jamil. Um, these were some of my thoughts. I, you know, I tried to say a lot here. You did well. And Amanda, um, yeah. what were your thoughts? Do you want to add uh, other things? Yeah, I mean, I think you encapsulated the modules very well. I think one of the things that I liked that was um, a tool, an awareness tool that you talked about um, were behavioral barriers both that come out of your place of privilege, because we all have places, we, we all inhabit a place of privilege and a place of non-privilege, you know, depending on, I'm female, but I'm white, but, I, you know, so we all, there are different times in our lives when we are in both places, all of us. So the be behavioral barriers that we encounter because of those, um, those factors, you know, and, and how to conquer those, how to get over those, and I think that's, you know, that kind of um, training and awareness that can help you reflect on your own behavior and recognize when you're coming at something from, you know, because of a certain bias that you have that you weren't aware of. I think that could help all of us, you know. So, and, and that was one of, you know, two hours worth of details that he shared across these modules. Um, I love the guidelines. I love the idea of having common dialogue across the town basically, between Youth Commission, the school department, the school board, um, and maybe people in town hall. I mean, have us all have the guidelines, at least start with that, so that we're all starting with the same um, language. Um, and, you know, I, I thought he had a lot to offer. I, I liked what his um, module said. One thing I took away, which I don't think you mentioned, if we don't do a train the train, the train the trainer 18 people provided ample time to then practice what you're learning in the session. So there are more iterations of each topic so that you're then better equipped to actually train somebody else. If we wanted to shift focus, and again, this is something with youth, I mean, the Youth Commission started this, so it's if Youth Commission decided to maybe adjust their focus and not do train the trainer, but just do the training. So you are a recipient of training, not planning to also train. They could accommodate more people. So if we had a broader audience, we could fit more bodies into that kind of training. They could cover it a little bit faster. So it might, we might get more for the for the dollar. And then the only last thing that was brought up was there is also um, this same kind of training is offered. They offer something called pace training, which they offer in different cities, including Boston, multiple times a year. And that could be a good one-off option for an administrator who might want to go and, and, and take on these topics initially in a safe venue without people who report to him or her, whether it's a principal or you know, a superintendent, kind of the idea of maybe in addition or partnering with this, having that option to go to a hosted training as just a single participant where you're not 
maybe being under the observation of everybody in the district, which I think could be valuable. You would still get the same guidelines, communication tools, the same frameworks, but not maybe in as difficult a setting. So those were all really interesting things that came up as options. Yeah, and I great. think that um, that training, just as a benchmark, I think I wrote down the price for that, the around 1050, yeah. Yeah. 1050 for to go to their pace so training. 1050 $1, $1, Figured. Sorry, yeah, one thousand ten thousand, and I figured it wasn't ten dollars right, really for, for one person to go to their training. Okay, is one thousand. It's I. I remember I forget that, how many that, that sounds right. Yeah. I, I think it was a one day. A one day. One day. It was seen like a conference, is yes. how he expressed it. Yeah. Uh, I guess, like I said, you know, going in, I was you know skeptical, um, but. After seeing what I learned just in those two hours, sometimes you know these conversations are not easy to even say uh, you know address these issues. So I think he did a good job of guiding some of that. I was able to share some of my um, thoughts on you know he talked about how you don't uh, you know people denying differences. Mm -hmm. um, and that that was an interesting conversation, and I gave him my view on it. Uh, from a very spiritual practice, you know, how how I look at it when someone says that, it's not that you're not acknowledging differences, but you see the sameness, mm. if you will. Um, so he was able to guide some of that conversation. So it, it was, uh, I thought even those two hours were very engaging, mm -hmm. and everybody on the Youth Commission had, uh, you know, uh, good points, uh, conversations. We had someone who's serving on the Youth Commission who is a teacher in, in our district, so she is going to be mm -hmm. there too, so that's a good thing too. Um, I was hoping that instead of making a motion at this meeting, perhaps we want, do we all want to absorb this a little bit? What do you think, Nancy? Yeah, I want to understand the options, because you've put out a few. Right. So, so three. So yes, so <laughs> just for clarity, <laughs> if we want to partner with the Youth Commission, they are committed to doing Train the Trainer. Correct. So that, that they put out the three thousand dollars that would require between one and two thousand dollars to deal with it, the piece of the training that would include us presumably if the administration is interested in doing their own group of 18 people we might be able to negotiate a better price mm -hmm. to do both but we also might be able to then bring in more town partners that would take the mm -hmm. amount of money that it would take to train us down yeah. so we have that that is the two separate pieces of the visions. This one piece is the piece to train, just the one to $2,000 to train the group of us yeah. with the possibility of adding on a module for the admin team. Uh, I have reached out but have not connected with Rick, who is in charge of visions, to see what they could offer us in terms of price. Uh, we also have the free training with Jamil, which I think, regardless of what we choose, is something that we should do. And then. The pace, which is 1050 for one person. So we can kind of bring that back. I do think for the youth commission, it would be, I think, ideal if we could add this on to Tuesday if people feel to make a decision sooner rather than later so that they can let him know what they're going with. And then we can identify on after we voted and, and maybe to consider what the funding sources could be. One thing that had come to my mind is we did set money aside for our training that we could pull that piece out of. Mm -hmm. uh, and in the meantime, between now and Tuesday, I could also see if we were going to bring in some other partners from the town elected officials to see if, what that portion would be. I think that's so, a great idea. And we may not, I mean, we had a little discussion about whether all five of us would go, especially with where it's train the trainer. We really wouldn't be training anybody. I mean, we, that's not the role that we are in exactly. So it, it might be the case that we don't all, if, if there's a need for these seats, like if, yeah. if there were administrators who might want to go, who might, um, you know, want to take a seat and all five of us wouldn't fit, I think we could consider whether we are the, the right people to be in those seats. So I guess I, in terms of, a, I don't know if you want to speak at all about the, your thoughts on the admin team. No, I just think that if we send two administrators, then we need to find the time for two to train 16 yeah. and then we get to that place where 16 are bringing it back into the building and somehow it it may lose some of you know like a game of telephone yeah you know it, it gets watered down at some point right so 
I think from my point of view, it would be nice if all of the admin team had the opportunity to do that training. Mm -hmm. And I agree with what Amanda is saying about, you know, when you put people in to train the trainer, we, ha we ought to think about what is the opportunity for that person to train as many people as possible coming out on the other side. Mm -hmm. I so, uh, okay, sorry, mm -hmm. I, I think the people that I would see us training would be the future people who come onto the school committee. I would see that as being perpetuating the lens that hopefully will broaden and to bring that to our work and I, I don't think we need to necessarily figure that piece out today but I, I think that in terms of the administration what I'm hearing from Dr. Kavanaugh is that we would need a second if they're going to go with visions they would need their own grouping of 18 to do it or, or most what were they doing? Well. So uh, I, I just want to share one thing, you know, I, I think if we are not stuck on the term train the trainer, yeah, mm -hmm. right, and just think of it as training for right. us, and that's just an added bonus, right, that if you want to do that, they're letting you use that material. Yes. Right? Right. That's that how I would, have, yes, we don't, I we don't have to train the tra anybody. Right. This is a kickoff. Youth Commission is already on the path and we are partnering with them to send a strong message. And the reason asking for someone um, from the mm -hmm. admin or the staff members was more a connectivity so that they are hearing what's going on there. And, you know, with all the work that you have going on, they're able to bring and do the cross pollination and perhaps give you feedback if your current uh, you know, consultant is good or if visions is good great and maybe this is something to go forward with those would be some of the opportunities and in terms of timing um you know uh, don ronan who's the chair of mm -hmm. youth commission she was very open and flexible to accommodating schedules of uh, of all the participants including um, administration that it could be done in the summer that's the time frame we're talking about really with this Personal oh. time. It would it would not be during the work week. That's we, right. I think the group agreed that it would have to be personal time because many of the many people work. Yeah. So right. it would be yeah. a weekend right. or right. evening. We also talked about opening it up to town partners such as Connor or perhaps had the Batman and whoever, but we didn't want that to stop us from proceeding. Right. right. And and that's what Youth Commission is wanting. They want to proceed. They want right. us to certainly come. They're open to getting others to come. But they don't want to stop. Um, and, right, and that's why I feel like if we could make a decision on Tuesday so that we're I not holding so. them up in their ability to book this and to move forward with what they're going to do. So where is the money going to come from? So the money would could come, it could come from, it's not the only place, but we set aside in our budget money for the for us to do trainings. It, Sufficient to cover $2,000? It, well, yes. That it, well, and it might only be $1,000. It, okay. It's between one and two, and the Youth Commission is very willing to work with what we're able okay. to do. But it was the amount of money we set aside, my understanding is, was based off of the cost of the MASC conference. I, I remember and that. my I guess is that it all five of us are probably $2, not going to go to the MASC conference. Um, for us, because in part because some of us went this year already. Um, and, just in part because of the timing doesn't always work. And I'm hoping that if we're able to get someone from the administration to join, maybe that justifies from some of the diversity related PD budget you may have, maybe $500 here or there, just throwing it out there. <laughs> just being creative. Be great to get parts and rack in all Actually, that came up too. too. That that came up. So, and athletics. Yeah. I mean, there are a lot of people who are student facing outside of the classroom and youth facing coaches across you know town coaches who, yeah yeah right. and so many so many of the different roles that people have that they're interacting with different people different families the way that we interact with people when they come for our meetings the way we, the information in the lens that we have guides us in policy and budget decisions it's something I think the majority of the town could use really but it's it's a starting point mm. Yeah, and I, I want to make a make a point that this is not just about um, you know cultural diversity. Mm -mm. It's diversity of all kinds right. based on what we heard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So we can still because that agenda has not gone yet to Connor. Correct. Slide that in. Yes. Um, and so we we would need to make a recommendation on, on you know on oh. Tuesday if we can come back with how many of us are able to go, including from the school, 
we don't have to give the exact names, but at least some numbers. Yes. Um, that should be sufficient, right? There are no dates and times. So there are no dates and times set, and that's something that they're flexible. That that's what Dawn, who was the chair, had said to me, was that they're willing to work around how many of us want to go, when it's convenient, uh, and to start with that point. There was a conversation, just to close this out, also to include some students including like those who are the Youth Commission liaison. Mm -hmm. But I guess I would throw that to Dr. Kavanaugh in your conversation with um, maybe Mr. Bishop. If there were, I don't know where we are with like ADL training next year or in future years, I think it was grant funded, but um, there was a seeming an eagerness on the part of Youth Commission, I think, I, I think that's characterized accurately, to make sure that youth leaders can hear the same message somehow. So mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know now or if at a later date, but I'll just throw that out there because it came up in the conversation right and I think Amanda the other part to keep in mind with when we engage students um, we had talked about a little bit is their schedule still mm -hmm. and you know are they you know uh, are they engaged in too many of these or is this appropriate I mean it's great if they're able to manage it all mm -hmm. uh, but not wanting to stress the kids too much either You'll make those decisions, and the kids will make those decisions, hopefully. Okay, so we will bring this back on Tuesday, and that then brings us into old business. Uh, and we have item A is nature's classroom field trip change of date. Okay, so this one's actually very easy. Mm -hmm. um, you saw in the memo, in January, you had approved the overnight field trip for the sixth graders to go to nature's classroom. The dates set on that were October 22nd to October 25th. Since then, Nature's Classroom has called the middle school and said that's a very busy week for them. And we tend to send a very, very big group out there. So what Nature's Classroom is asking is if we can just push it back a week and instead of doing the 22nd to the 25th, would you approve the 15th to the 18th? So they're just moving it back one week and that's all they need for you to do. I move to approve those new dates. Second. Jen, oh. you're going to... Are you nodding as you second? Them? Yes, I was okay, just sorry. waiting for all those in favor. Okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> all those in favor. I'm just trying to follow the rules. <laughs> <laughs> Motion by Meg, second by Jen. All those in favor. Aye. Aye. And that moves. Thank you. And that brings us down to the 2019-2020 school calendar. And I will open. It. There are a, a, a new one that's going around. Is that? I do have copies Excellent. of that calendar. Just a little cleaner, and sleeker site which we think will be a little more legible uh mrs fargio and georgette worked very hard to do this so okay so send those back. typically we don't bring the calendar back this many times for discussion <laughs> no um, but we it when we did approve this we made uh, i i think from an it felt like at the time an intent to be more inclusive we had changed the um date that has of uh, columbus day to be just labeled as indigenous persons day and I actually received a lot of feedback on that of people who were um, unhappy about that for a variety of different reasons. Did you receive written feedback? I received primarily verbal feedback. Okay. Um, people who have had called um, through the uh, district office as well, and some people who kind of pulled me aside, um, some other elected officials in town. Uh, and the reasoning, and, and there were a couple of things that were compelling enough to me that I felt like we should bring it back for discussion. The first point um, was that there one person had said that they felt that we had overreached because we had not brought this, vetted it through the community. And I thought that actually is a very fair point, that we had changed something that has traditionally been on the calendar, mm -hmm. and we didn't make advance notice of it because it seemed like in the spirit of inclusivity and in the spirit of the meeting, it, it felt like a good idea at the time and we moved forward. The other point that people had brought, more than one person had brought forward was that Columbus Day is a state and federal holiday, and that whether we acknowledge it as such or not does not change the fact that it is, in fact, a holiday, a legal holiday, and that that titling should not be removed from our calendar because of that reason. So I bring it back um, for us to consider uh, for that, and I'm just going to look because I did not get a chance to look at all the changes that were made in the formatting, but the other thing that we had discussed um, at the last meeting was the inclusion of different uh, holidays that can, were can not. Can I talk to Columbus Day before we walk away from that? 
Sure. Um, I did a little research too, and I saw that in order to change it on the public school calendar, there would have to be a townwide vote. Okay. And that has That's to be good. submitted yeah. for a town mm -hmm. meeting. Yeah. So if someone feels, you know, the fire to right. do that, because I perfectly understand people who, yeah. you know, appreciate this holiday and they want it to be there. I think it's, it's worth considering in the future, especially because we live in Hopkinton, to add to Columbus Day, Indigenous Persons Day, because so much of the land that we have built our houses on in the area that we lived in was inhabited by the Algonquin tribe. And the lake I live on, Lake Maspinock, is Nipmuc dialect of Algonquin, meaning water at the foot of a great hill. And so our roots here, I think it would be fine to pay tribute to the indigenous mm -hmm. community, to the First Nation, who were here, um, and who helped settle Natick and Neponset. I think that that is very present to us in a way that Columbus is not not to denigrate his position in anyone's calendar of the mind, but I think it would be an appropriate conversation for people in Hopkinton to have, to talk about honoring the indigenous population from whom we took this land. Thank you for that. Very well said, Meg. Um, yeah. You know, I think, um, I, I like that people called and resisted because it seems to me that it's only when we have hard conversations that we reveal to ourselves our blind spots. And my blind spot was the sensitivity with mm -hmm. which people would respond. Right. So I love hearing that. I want to have those talks. Mm -hmm. But I, I feel like the silent voice here is the entire indigenous tribe that was wiped out. And, and what are we doing? We're living on their land. So I, I, I guess what I had in my mind thought bringing this back, I'm not sure that it has to be either or. Yeah, I've no. seen people do the slash. That, right. That's what we have. But on, then, but. <laughs> how do you, you know, state your preference? Is it Columbus first? Because C comes before in I and in indigenous? Or does this, is this a town matter? I think it's a town yeah. matter. I think I'm interested about the, what, where did you find the process? Is that in the town bylaws? Is it a state law? Is it a federal Just law? Just Google Columbus Day state laws yeah. school calendars. Yeah. Right. For well, Massachusetts. So that, that is a fascinating case. It will just pop case. up that what, what you need to do is very simple to make a motion in front of town meeting. Yeah. So I understand, and I hadn't realized that our one conversation was going to generate the I, immediate change in the calendar, which I thought, well, that's pretty impressive. You can change <laughs> things that quickly. So I appreciate having this opportunity to talk about it again because I think it's important. I don't want to have holidays represented on the calendar that I'm not really cognizant of their importance. And, and shouldn't we bring this knowledge about the community we live in and the land we have stolen from other people into view of the children who live here? I think paying, um, paying the due respect and homage, if you will, to the people who existed before us, uh, that's always a good thing, and uh, I, I, I'm and who still it. exist. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. tribe. I mean, they still exist. I'm so all for it. The proper process for an official change is for us at the next town meeting. Yeah. This one's closed to bring either a citizen petition or a, a warrant article. Right. To, right. To next exactly. Okay. But so that that would be a conversation for. Next yeah. year, when yeah. we get to that point um, in discussing our calendar. And you're bringing us back to this. I, I really like the format of this calendar. Uh, for some reason, these colors are looking more pleasant to my eyes than what I have seen previously. So <laughs> that's a very pleasant change for me personally. Um, I also noticed that you, know, you mentioned the three holidays being recognized on the face of the main calendar. Um, Diwali. Lunar New Year in Eid al Fitr. Are they? Um, um, in the next page, you say, however, in recognition of the growing number of students who celebrate Diwali, Lunar New Year, and Eid al Fitr, HPS has placed these holidays on the face of its calendar to increase awareness among students, teachers, and staff that these are significant holidays for our student population. Right? 
Yes. Do you, do you actually see I them? Don't on the face? See them. I'm just gonna say I, I don't, don't see, see them. them. No, I think that they were there and they then in the there. revision they were removed. Okay. Um, one other request I have, and, and thank you for proposing this thoughtful um, procedure, and also thankful to all the people who spoke up. I very, right? it's very much so. I and I feel like the great thing, two great things actually. One is people are paying attention, and that's a great thing that they're engaged and they they take the time to reach out and want to add their opinion. And I think that also it gives us better lens to represent the entire community. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. The second thing that I wanted to add was, in addition to um, the DESI recommended list, there are a few others that come to my mind that I could suggest which are celebrated in our community, but also throw it out there to the larger community that, you know, we're doing this, and if there are things that you observe and you would like to be added at the end of it, we would like to, uh, we would entertain that, right? Is yes. that fair? Well, I would recommend that if you are approving the calendar proper the tonight, that this is something that we sort of hold off on and just take a little bit of time to put this out there publicly to see if people agree that these are the important dates that um, just because the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education thinks so, does Hopkinson also think so? Because I think we need to think about our clientele, not the clientele sort of statewide. Uh, and then I guess one other thing that I would say is we've had conversations about putting together a calendar committee in the summertime and to really think about are these the dates on which we don't want to hold school. And I know that other districts have done the same and mm -hmm. maybe one of the things that we do is we put out questions to the community that say mm -hmm. you know, choose two dates on which you would like to keep your child home because it's a religious or cultural observance for your family. And then we just look at those responses and if there are dates where a, a high percentage of people would not be sending their kids or would prefer to be able to keep their children home, then maybe we look at this and sort of redesign that calendar to you know, be cognizant and aware of, of the needs of our entire population. And I know that we can't take every one of those dates and put it on the front of the calendar, but it would certainly be nice to just do it in a sort of population based, just a very mathematical maybe kind of way. But that's for a future date, but I would like to do some work on the calendar for the 2021 school year so that we're really sort of thoughtful about who our kids are and who our families are. Excellent. 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 Thank you. Uh, one last question, um, Dr. Kavner, hopefully. You know me. Um, <laughs> The Diwali Lunar New Year and Eid al Fitr, uh, were these dates coming from some things that you were able to look at with absences? Um, no, I think that when we put those dates originally on the front of this, right. I think it was only with your recommendation. Right, and but there were two others, right? So there was also Eid al Adha and Kwanzaa. Okay, I don't know that we got those two, so. Um, so and I, would you like to go back and put those all five of those dates on the front for next year? Is that what I would like that. I don't know. That's what we moved with, and I guess that was based on you know some of the information you had shared based on the work Westboro has done. Mm -hmm. So why don't we go forward with those five for this year? And as the subcommittee gets formed and they come back with the recommendation of what goes on in the face, what goes on in the back, um, we can work through that. Can I also did receive feedback from people who were very pleased to see that we had added some of those onto right. the front. Um, I just wanted to toss this out there. We have a long, a long list, but I think this probably is not complete, of yes. important dates for many different mm -hmm. um, groups. I kind of view this front page as primarily things that impact where my child has to be when. Mm -hmm. At school or at home, at school or at home, early release, you know, m much of this is actionable for many people mm -hmm. um, because school is in session or not in session. And one of the things, as I was working with Georgette on this, and she was fabulous and deserves all sorts of praise because her patience is endless, which is great. Um, but in order to make this a really usable document for people to keep it kind of actionable, not that I don't want to recognize, but I think if we put all of this, I don't know how you pick in some in some cases. I mean, and things like, I mean, I can just say, like Ash Wednesday. 
as it turns out, that's next Wednesday, which happens to be the night of the jazz com competition. So, you know, people can't go to church because they have, but this is, you know, there are many things that don't, they're actionable to me as an individual, but not the, the school is open regardless. So I'm not sure if it helps to put a different lens on the front page versus the other page. I guess. To, just to keep it yeah, simple. And I definitely, I, I hear what you're saying, and I definitely see merit in that. Yeah. But to me, some of these other holidays, and you're right, we're never going to capture them all, but the ones that we, at least some of the ones that we had identified, adding them back in puts out, because I think in reality, as much as we want to think that everyone's going to look at both pages, yeah. people are going to look at the first page True. almost yeah. exclusively, primarily. It's great that we have the statement and the, the list of dates, but it impacts kids in terms of making sure that it, that lens is there for teachers, that, yep. that you know this is a holiday that a number of students are going to be, while they'll be in school or they may not be in school. I think all of those holidays, or most of them fall on weekends next year, is that? That's right, all, all okay. five of yeah. them do. And I guess it's the same spirit with which we are trying to add Columbus Day slash Indigenous Persons Day. There's no functional aspect to that, as far well, as I'm concerned. Well, the day is a holiday. Right. So it's that's a, why it's on. Uh, uh, right. But it's called Columbus Day, but we are adding the Indigenous Day as a gesture mm -hmm. and as a recognition. And to me, recognition of these other five holidays comes from that spirit. Uh, but obviously, I'm just one voice. And, you know. So which were the five? Um, these were, you know, the three of these are listed at the back. You know, we had voted on those yep. right. last time, right? Right. So one of the thoughts was to look at um, our school attendance to see if, you know, kids take holidays for religious days, mm -hmm. to see if some are marked, and if there are spikes there that could guide what we put out on yep. the face, if you will. Um, but then again, you know, if your uh, workplaces don't support that, sometimes even though parents want to keep their children, they send them mm. to school so they don't miss out. So those were some of the things uh, that came up. Uh, but uh, so the five were uh, Diwali, Lunar New Year, Eid al-Fitr, Eid al-Adha, and Kwanzaa. Those were the five. Uh, so again. I wonder, maybe, I mean, maybe it's something as simple as bolding the number of any important date on the front. I mean, if you look at the little underneath the boxes, when we start adding, it's going to get even. If we bold in the dates that are then referenced here, and a teacher looks at it and says, oh, it's a bold date. I wonder what that is. And then can check. I mean, I, I totally agree. I just think we, we I don't know if that, if I look, you know, someone might say I'd like Ash Wednesday on there. Or I'd like, you know, there are other important dates. Um, I don't know if you include the start of Ramadan, which I think is very important for especially the older kids who do fast and staff members as well. So well, it Christmas just, is not on here either. So I just don't know if, the, mm -hmm. I, I understand completely and I'm 100% behind the message. I just don't know what the right communication device is. I think from a practical standpoint, why I like that the back sheet is that if I'm a classroom teacher, and and maybe even the bolding works there, but if I'm a classroom teacher and there's a particular holiday that may fall in the middle of the week, yeah. then I have a sense that I probably shouldn't have a test, a quiz, a big homework assignment, or when a kid comes to me and says, I'm going to be out tomorrow, yeah. I don't say, well, here's the 10 things you're going to miss, and right. sort of ratchet up you know, that kid's anxiety about being out of school. Like, for me, the importance of those dates are sensitivity around teaching and learning on the teacher mm -hmm. side. Yeah. So, so would a bolding work? Like, would that be enough? I mean, like many of the five dates that we want to highlight are not school time. They're set weekends or summer or, I mean. Yeah, the holidays we have in here now are typically legal holidays, right? right? Um, so you're right. We don't put in Christmas. We don't put in Easter and those I know will fall within school vacation weeks are always on a Sunday. So I don't want to be insensitive to people who would have a major holiday that will at some point fall in the middle of the week. Um, and I think that that's the importance of the work that we will do next summer. Yeah, that's good. So I guess it, it depends on how much we want, weight we want to put on the back sheet. 
or how much weight we want to put on the front sheet and why. And that's so, I guess my other thought, and I, I, my sense is that we're not all going to agree, and that's okay, that we will come out with a majority vote and we'll go with whatever for next year. But my, my preference, in addition, would be to leave the ones that we had already voted on the calendar, on the front page of the calendar for the 1920 year, and to discuss it again when we come back to the summer discussion, in part because there are people who looked at that and they saw that that's what we had voted and yeah. that was something they were pleased with. Yeah. And I feel like to then kind of roll that back gives a different message. But I also feel like this is something that the five of us will I, I figure out in whichever way we, it, if the calendar will go forward and we'll figure it out for the following year yeah. with wider community participation through the calendar subcommittee. I think that's a great idea, the wider community participation, because I, you know, I struggle with blending church into the yeah. spiritual and the secular. I struggle a lot with that. And, you know, as I said, Karl Marx's birthday is May 5th. And as I said, I'll join you to celebrate. Um, but we also have Yom Kippur and Rosh Hashanah. And, I know. You know those are days off. I, right. I have lots of things to say about all of it, but I think that's better for the committee that we form and not a, you know, reflexive, reactive decision right now. Mm -hmm. In, except to the extent that we have to vote a calendar for 1920 before we get there. I need there. more time. I, I don't mm -hmm. want to rush this. Okay. So, well, again, there's, well, there's no, voting no, the dates. I'll vote the calendar, but I'm just saying I... I don't feel like, I don't I feel like my arm's being twisted. But I, well, so I don't, so for 1920, I, 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 people need the calendar just to be able to make plans. I don't want your I calendar. Don't to so why don't we, why don't we make a motion and see uh, where we go with it? Okay. I'd like to make a motion that we approve this calendar with an amendment of adding the five holidays that we had previously recognized either bolded or color-coded, which are Diwali, Lunar New Year, Eid al-Fitr, Eid al-Adha, and Kwanzaa um, to show on the calendar. Do we have a second? And when you say on the calendar, you, you mean on this? I mean, there is oh, also the, I mean, I don't know how many people really use paper, so there is always the hope that when we have it on the new website. We might have a more interactive way to drill through the sure. gates, which we That's okay. And if there is, is there discussion on a different motion if we don't have a second for this motion? I'd like to approve it as it is. In the, the, including the indigenous including persons? Including this page. It, so do we want to wait on that so that we can make sure it's inclusive enough? Or do you want to go? I think that we can vote the calendar and not worry about this because for today because I think this is the piece that needs to be um, available for scheduling purposes. And this piece, the teachers will need to be aware of by September of next year, but we have some time to work on that. Um, I also think the days off that you've suggested be added I'm not opposed to that idea, but I also, I guess I'm not for it because they don't include days off. Kind of side with it, what Amanda said earlier. I think this is when we're in school and when we're not in school. Right. And right. for sure there are secular holidays on here right now, but at this point, let's just know when we need to be here and when we don't need to be here. So, in your, just to clarify for your motion, does that leave, you want to leave Indigenous Persons Day on there as well? Well, of course I do. <laughs> um, I just wanted to. Second yes, or before right. Columbus Day? I, I'm fine going second because because it's alphabetical. Okay. So a motion by Meg. Is there a second? second? It's written. Yeah. Is that what you said? I'll second that. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Okay. So we have it. It does carry. There are three in favor um, and uh, one opposed. Yeah. How did you and vote? So I, I am abstaining from it because okay. I don't have a, uh, I, I feel like I, there are merits on both, and I feel like if we brought it, I, I guess I would vote against it then because I would like to have, not to be wishy-washy.
So I will just. Well, are we committed we'll though? Because I want to be committed I, and to I doing this. I think that this. that's the piece. This that, is the yeah. thing. That's the pieces that I. We'll right. I want to be committed to this. I don't want this not to happen. Right. Yeah. Even for 19, uh, even if we do better in 2021, I still want to do at least this for 2020. Okay. So just to clarify what the motion is, is yeah. are we including this as written in here or we are not including this? We're going to come back. We, We're coming back. We're coming back to that. I mean, I love all this, I, but I think we need to clarify that this okay. is schools on and schools off. Yes, okay. right. I agree. And right. I think yep. what, what I would recommend that we do is take this and post it for a few weeks yes. and give it to the community to take a look at and just make sure that what's important to them is reflected on here. Yes. And then that way there, when a teacher needs a quick reference sheet, they've got this, right? Yes. Or, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. even so, your neighbor needs a quick reference sheet, there it is. So, yeah. okay, so the, it passes three to two, and that is going to need, this is going to need to be cleared up just at the top that... Yes, because those are no longer bolded. So I do want to say this, that I'm a little disappointed with the whole way this has all turned out. And we've had plenty of time to look through and we've talked about it. We have voted out in the past and we have come back. And even what we have written out here is not, you know, it says uh, in recognition of the growing number of students, these three holidays have been placed on the face of its calendar, right? This is the memo that we got to look at. And uh, again, we are going back on it. So, a little disappointed. Uh, but we didn't get okay. this until tonight. Like, I think, right. you know, I, I really liked, you had shared, I think it was Newton's um, calendar, which was basically the bare bones front and the detailed second page. I have a cl clarifying question about, because I'm always thinking about the website. When we put the calendar, the school calendar on the website, whatever we call the school calendar, can it not include, it can include these on the, it, was it okay? I mean. On the scrolling calendar or what the, what will replace the existing scrolling calendar? Yeah. It can include all of these, that everything. Nice. It should include everything. Because that's more visible than a piece of paper. Right. Okay. But, um, so would you like for Georgette to send this document out to the community and ask for feedback? Yeah. And, and I mean, I feel ya, Mina. I feel ya, and I feel, you know, you don't want to disappoint people, and I don't want to disappoint people either. But I'm, I feel this secular, religious thing going on here that needs more conversation. I, I, you know, again, I understand it's not about me alone. It's a lot of people in the community who were so excited. Um, you have to understand, and I think I had shared my personal emotions as a member of the community, not as a school committee member after the vote was taken. I don't know if you all remember the email that I sent to all of you. Mm -hmm. It's about being recognized that you exist on the face of the paper. And it's hard for people to understand that emotion. I get that, and it's okay. And, you know, we've waited. And we can wait a little longer. Maybe it'll come out in the summer. Maybe it won't. We'll go through that. And it, it is what it is, and it's okay to I understand where you're coming at it from. And for me, like I said, it's, it's very symbolic to be on the face, just as symbolic it is to add the Indigenous Peoples Day. And it, not all of these are religious. A lot of it is very cultural. Um, and not everybody, you know, I celebrate Christmas. My family celebrates Christmas. To me, it's not just a religious aspect, it's also the cultural aspect of it. And I try to understand. So, like I said, it's my viewpoint. I appreciate and honor your vote. No hard feelings. I'll get over it. But there is, there is nothing on the front that isn't a day off. I mean, I don't think, of all the holidays that we all celebrate, unfortunately, Massachusetts hasn't made a holiday to represent all the residents of Massachusetts. So I think, I don't know, I think the front is, is not representative. It's just representative of the state calendar and the... Yeah. Pragmatic. It's pragmatic, yeah. There ain't no day celebrating the disabled it's, yet. Well, I... 
lots of things that could be considered for future calendars. I think. Yeah. And Black for, History Month. And, I mean, there are yeah, lots. Yeah, but of I, I think, and I do want to move on. I don't want to dwell on it because we did take a vote already. But for me, it was, it's more about the fact that we already took a vote on that. And rolling that back feels a little bit hard. But we didn't have. I love at the time we didn't have this idea of a more inclusive option. You know, I think if that's this is where yeah. I jumped yeah. mentally because I felt yeah. like that's. I liked what we did was better than not doing anything. But then the idea of actually doing it well, what I thought was doing it well, but recognizing that my viewpoint, maybe not putting it on the front, is hurtful. You yeah. know. All right. That moves us into our second opportunity for public comment. Uh, we have no public here. Uh, so that will move us into items by consensus. Okay. So as superintendent, I recommend that the school committee vote to approve the items by consensus as outlined in your agenda. Okay. So moved. Yeah. Second. Okay. Motion by Mina, second by Meg. All those in favor? Aye. 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 It is um, unanimous and it so carries and our uh, Next thing is an, a motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn. Second. Motion by Meg, second by Nina. All those in favor? Aye. Yes. Aye. 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 So we are adjourned at 9.19 p.m. Our next meeting is on uh, Tuesday, March 5th at Town Hall. It's a joint meeting with the Board of Selectmen as well as a regular meeting that will happen in Town Hall as well. And then we will not meet again until March 21st. So thank you all and have a good night.